let's take a moment to examine these failure patterns. The first failure pattern is we're going to look at the brake lights. Notice how all the brake lights join in one spot. Notice on the left side over here, two of them go into circuits that aren't supplied by the same supply. So it appears that we could have a problem common to three of them, the brake lights, the high light, the right brake light, the left brake lights. But there are other lights that are a separate problem. That is something we need to look at and see what's next. So this first priority problem indicates that they all converge at a common point. They all converge here, saying it could be there or in that circuit where they're all joined back together in that area that the problem is. Now that's a very important point. We have not taken any wiring harnesses apart. We haven't done anything at this point, but we know we need to start testing. They can, it indicates we have a problem with the B plus supply. We can also divide this and say, is this the dividing point? Is the short before or after the brake switch? And we can decide that by applying the brake switch. If the short is present with the brake switch applied, not present with it released, it's before the brake switch. If the short is present with the brake switch open, which is our case now, the short is in the circuit after the brake switch. That is what we've identified. And remember, so far we haven't done anything for testing. We're observing patterns. The other pattern, the second failure, is all the, the lamps on the left are out. Well, what do they have in common? The, the lamp on the left goes over to a circuit that's not associated with B plus with the other two lamps. And the one in the middle goes right over to a circuit that has power. It's the circuit that's powering up the tag lamps and we can see they're working. And the brake light doesn't work, but it may work not work for two reasons. Apparently there's two causes for the brake light not working. We need to explore these in more detail. We're going to take them one at a time and talk about them. So the brake lights are out on both sides. The rear lamp assembly has four lamps. They're all out. And we're going to start testing with the brake switch. We're going to go look for that short first. It's the top item on our priority and the thing we should see. So let's talk about the brake lights. Where do you start? Well, check the operation of the brake switch, as we said. We could use it as a dividing point. Connect a voltmeter to the fuse supply, go into B plus and to the brake switch. Remember, if the fuse is blown, it, this may be a result of a short to ground in the B plus circuit. Is the fuse blown? No. Well, in that case, check the brake switch for normal operation. If the fuse is good, it must be the switch. Yes, the fuse is blown. Oh, different problem. Check for a short to ground. Now we could have a number of circuit problems in there, but you've got the idea. Our fuse is blown, so there may be a short to ground, and we're going to need to start testing there. Now we're sharing with you that this is the location of our short to ground. I want you to know where it is so you can understand our testing. We're going to talk about testing with an ohmmeter. An ohmmeter can be used at various points to confirm the problem. But the problem with testing with an ohmmeter is a short could be any part of the circuit. An ohmmeter lacks the ability to indicate which direction the short is or do it. If you're going to use an ohmmeter, you must open the splices and check each circuit individually to locate the short circuit. So we've got to have a, find a better way of doing that. But let's go look at this. We're going to talk about this equipment later, but let's study the problem. If we don't separate these circuits, we're going to have to do a lot more work. So let's talk about what happens. We're going to come here and start checking with our ohmmeter. When we hook our ohmmeter to this point here, on the brake light, it indicates a short to ground, as you see on the, on the ohmmeter. When I go over here to the high lamp for the brake, up over the lift gate, it indicates a short. And if we go to the other side, it indicates a short. So now once I've got a short indication, it can be anywhere in the circuit. And notice that red circle. That's an important thing for you to understand about diagrams. Quite often, diagrams, to try to simplify them, leave things off. In this case, there's other circuits over there. The trailer brake diagram is on another page, and it could also be the source of our problem. It could be shorted to ground here, and here's our brake switch up here. So everything we saw on the other page or shortcuts just say, hey, it goes somewhere else. Here's the diagram working the brake switch for this. So it takes two diagrams to put the whole circuit together. Be careful. This happens sometimes. So no matter where we go, we're going to indicate an open circuit. We're going to have to find a better way of diagnosing shorts than we can use an ohmmeter. So let's talk about that next. How could we find better equipment without spending a lot of money to detect short circuits?